everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of Dermatologist Talks, Science of Beauty. I'm Chelsea, and today we're going to be talking to Dr. Tio Wan Lin about the common skincare problems she has seen as a practicing dermatologist in Singapore, and in particular, skincare concerns that are unique to Asia and the Southeast Asian region. So let's dive straight in. Can you tell us some of the most common skincare problems people are seeing this year? What are some of the treatments that you recommend? Hi, Chelsea. So... I think the overarching theme this year in 2020 is still related to wearing of the uh, face mask uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So we've spoken about mask knee, um, but something I want to focus on is really how the uh, the occlusive microenvironment of wearing a face mask can exacerbate pre-existing skin conditions such as rosacea, perioral dermatitis, eczema, because the the fact that you are breathing in and out of an enclosed environment, uh, it changes the temperature, the pH, and in addition, the saliva as well as your respiratory droplets are, are coming into contact with your skin. This changes the microbiological composition of healthy skin. So what we call microbiome dysbiosis is a result of this occlusive microenvironment and it will certainly affect your skin's health. Pigmentation concerns remain a perennial issue. Individuals are generally more conscientious now than say a decade earlier about applying sunscreen as sun exposure is uh, well established uh, as a link to various types of hyperpigmentation disorders and um, of course key in the development of skin cancers. Now face mask wearing poses specific challenges because of the occlusive microenvironment which increases the comedogenicity of sunscreen. With both phenomena existing in the current dermatology landscape, I proposed um, in my original white paper in the JAD that UPF 50 plus UV protective biofunctional textiles should replace the wearing of sunscreen for the lower half of the face as the gold standard for sun protection. Now, primarily, uh, you know, we, we all can appreciate the fact that it's going to be difficult to constantly reapply sunscreen when you're wearing a face mask. That aside, uh, it's also important to understand that a lot of facial sunscreens are not formulated to be water resistant. Now, the more water resistant a formula is, there is a higher lipophilic component, which increases the um, comedogenicity of the sunscreen as well. Moving on to skincare concerns that are particularly popular here in Asia. There's a pretty big obsession with lighter skin, with skin whitening products and treatments being extremely popular even to this day. Can you tell us your take on that? Culturally, fair skin has always been valued in Asia. With evolution of societal values, as well as our knowledge of dermatological science, it is increasingly apparent that one should not strive to change your skin tone. Any of these methods, such as you know some so-called skin lightening methods, like intravenous vitamin C or glutathione injections, they are not backed by sound dermatological research. And at very worst, they're dangerous, and at best, unnatural and unsustainable. In some parts of the world, prescription bleaching creams containing hydroquinone as well as high doses of topical steroids are readily available. Well, these certainly bleach the skin. It's not in the way that we think it is is healthy um, and in fact is full of side effects and dangers. For example, when your skin um, 
undergoes such artificial depigmentation caused by topical steroids and hydroquinone, you're actually increasing the risk of developing skin cancers because you lose the photoprotective effect of melanin. In addition, there can be irreversible skin thinning in the form of stretch marks and other forms of pigmentary changes. Yeah, I remember growing up that I was always advised by the older generation, like grandparents or aunties and uncles, that my skin tone was too dark, comparing me to my friends or cousins, and I always wished that I had fairer skin. I know this is a common sentiment that many have experienced, so what is your view on that? As a dermatologist, I want to emphasize that there's no better time than now for society to embrace authenticity. The message is simple. We should embrace our natural skin tone as healthy skin is beautiful skin. I think you're absolutely right. If there's one thing we should take away from this, that would be it. Well, that about sums up our episode. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode. Oh,